Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is Vaping Yourself to Root. Since it's Friday, let's keep today's story more fun and interesting than practical. It's a story about how a researcher uses a e-cig vape device to get root on a machine. Basically, this story started from a Twitter post, a video showing the a researcher plugging an e-vape device into his computer, and that resulted in it popping up a notepad window asking if you even vape, bro. As it turns out, at the B-Side security conferences in London, there was a presentation called Holy Smokes, How You Can Vape Yourself to Root. And this presentation apparently talks about how you can use a vaping device to own a computer, basically through the USB charging interface. Now at first I presume this had to do with basically the researcher forcing a, a USB human interface device into the e-cig. But as it turns out, it actually goes deeper. Apparently a particular e-cig vape device uses a ARM processor. And this particular researcher figured out how to replace the firmware on the the vape device and then use that in order to uh, leverage the same type of vulnerabilities you would for USB devices to gain control of a computer. At a high level, this isn't that new. You've seen me talk about things like the rubber ducky and Mr. Robot and human interface USB devices, basically things that pretend to be keyboard mechanisms and they have software scripting that allows them to be a virtual keyboard as soon as you plug it into a device and run anything the attacker once on your computer. So this whole idea of plugging a USB key into a device to take it over is not new at all and is really always possible if you plug mysterious USB devices into an unlocked Windows computer. However, it will be rather interesting to see if the researcher releases more details publicly about how he actually hijacked this particular uh, e-cig device's firmware. It sounds like an interesting way to convert an e-cig device into a hacking tool. Now, on a totally different uh, aside, I thought I'd also give an interesting WannaCry update. You probably remember the WannaCry ransom worm that spread in Europe and around the world a few weeks back, or, or practically a month back now. Anyways, you also probably heard some of the news where some researchers said that it looked like this particular ransom worm came from North Korean threat actors. In fact, nation state threat actors that were actually behind the Sony Pictures attack. Now, to be honest, at first, I kind of doubted this. The way these early researchers kind of put two and two together was based on some code artifacts they found in WannaCry that were similar to some of the code artifacts found in the Lazarius group or this particular nation state group's tools. Now I don't believe that code artifacts like that are perfect attribution just because code and tools are often shared on the underground. More importantly, I didn't feel like a nation state actor seemed to be the one behind WannaCry simply because of the fact it seemed to be criminal ransomware in the way it was targeting users for small amounts of money. A nation state, uh, you would presume, would be doing something more serious. However, over the past few days, more and more news is coming from some of the government agencies that are investigating this in the UK that seem to suggest there's more and more evidence that this comes from some North Korean uh, nation state actors. And I guess in the case of North Korea, it is possible that they could hack for monetary or financial motivation. Perhaps they do have criminal interests as well as political ones as well. Anyways, I just thought it was an interesting uh, update for WannaCry. Again, it's hard to really accept attribution for these sorts of attacks unless we know what the evidence is, but it is interesting seeing a lot of governments saying WannaCry does indeed come from North Korea. Anyways, just a couple of interesting stories for Friday. Thanks for watching.